Welcome. Today, I want to talk to you about the difference in dating historically and dating now and what the changes are. Why are we struggling so much with online dating, with meeting people at bars, meeting people out? So let's learn some key significances and how you can actually sit down and find out what you need in a partner. Okay, historically, what we've seen, we can call this the historical mate selection model. How we chose our partners used to really be based on socioeconomics and who we knew, who is in our area, who is in our town, depending upon what time we grew up in. Now, the advantage to this is our friends and our family and other people in the area used to know the people that we were getting connected with to date. In fact, often things were aligned or arranged. So we would meet someone that would either benefit our family or that would benefit our socioeconomic position. And the advantage to that is we had some behavioral pre-screening. In other words, they weren't gonna connect us with someone that they didn't think would suit us long-term as far as a relationship and how we already lived and viewed with the world. The disadvantage to that, of course, is you don't have a lot of choice when your parents or society is setting you up with someone else. But now we have this whole new model. You can call it the Hollywood model. It's about romance and chemistry and connection. And what we find is that people are looking for the chemistry immediately. They look for that testosterone and estrogen hit to see, ooh, am I attracted to them? And if they're not immediately attracted, they don't try to date that person. They turn them down. There's no real level of connection. Also, we're not getting any behavioral support. We don't know who that other person is truly, which is why we keep running into people that we say are narcissistic or, you know, I thought they were like this, but they were lying. They posted the wrong picture online dating. That picture was from 10 years ago. They pretended they were someone they weren't. So we start running into these challenges. So even though we have this huge freedom of choice, we're not really able to narrow down in our partners. So what do we want to do instead? Well, first of all, I need you to know, what is it that you're truly looking for in a partner? Not just are they kind, are they funny, but what are the traits? What are the qualities they are as a person in the world long term? So for example, when I took this class, Learning to Find Love, which is a soulmate course that helps you really identify this. It was created by a behavioral analyst for, um, what's what I'm looking for? For big companies, right? So they would say, what are the behaviors or what are the traits we need in someone for this CEO position or for the CFO position? And this woman created a class around this to help you find the same thing in love. The one thing we look at is what are we hiring for? Because when we actually look at what are the traits we need long-term in a person, in the person we're dating, in the person we want a long-term relationship with, in our soulmate. Now, instead of saying, well, that person's not right for me because they're not cute enough. She's not sexy enough. She doesn't dress right. She might be a little crazy. He might not be financially stable enough yet. Now we get to look at who are they? How do I get my healthy needs met long-term? Because I guarantee you when this comes first, your relationship is going to last longer. Because instead of relying on testosterone and estrogen to create the lust, or instead of relying on some of the serotonin and the dopamine to create that attraction, now we're looking at that long-term chemical bond, the oxytocin, the vasopressin, and what these do in our brain instead is they create long-term desire. They create long-term connection. Have you noticed that a lot of people tend to break up either right away or after a couple of years? Like there's this thing where people will date for a year and a half, two years, and then they break up. This is when the dopamine and the serotonin levels of chemistry leave our system when we're in relationship. So if you're finding yourself 
either going through people because there's lust and then the lust burns off or you're going through people and you're dating for a couple of years and then it kind of doesn't seem like this is really the thing. That's because you're engaging the wrong chemicals. You're not actually knowing what you need in a partner and driving for that. So I'd like you to comment below. What is it that you actually need in a long-term partner? Like for me, it's playfulness. I want my partner to be playful in the kitchen, playful in the bedroom. If I jump on a swing set and start swinging, I want them to laugh and think it's funny instead of being like, oh my God, you're so embarrassing. Get off of there. That's for children, right? I want them to joke around, but not so much they're the class clown. So for me, playfulness is a deep trait that I need in a partner. And I have it. I found it. Before I took the class, it wasn't something I had looked at before. So instead of getting frustrated with dating, step back, tune in. Are you being the person someone else would want to date? And if someone else doesn't have your traits, let them go with ease and kindness and know it's not rejection. What it is, is you are releasing them so they can find a better partner and you're releasing yourself so you can find someone better as well. Remember that you're loved, you're loving, and you are lovable. Have a lovely day.